Let's go! Five bold SEC predictions heading into 2022. And I'm going to need your help in the comment section today. Which one of these do you actually think will come to fruition? Now, first off, I want to welcome you to Power Hour SEC. My name is Carter. I've been wanting to launch this for quite some time. Some of you might know me from somewhere else. We'll talk about that coming up as well. But right off the jump here, for me, the spiciest prediction of them all, Georgia will not win the SEC East this year. I think, for me, I look at that roster, Nolan Smith, Jalen Carter, obviously Statavius Bennett at quarterback, lots of other key pieces that they do return. But trust me, coming from someone that watched a historic national championship team have a pretty bad fall off the following year, I do think it won't be as precipitous as 2019 LSU to 2020, but I do think there will be some, right? It was such an emotional year for Georgia, and look, 16 draft picks, that's a lot of production to replace. Now, you can make a case that Jalen Carter was the best player on Georgia's defense last year, and he does return, but... For me, I am a little worried about their wide receivers. I like McIntosh and those running backs as well. Milton has a lot of potential, and Georgia did bring in a really talented true freshman class. I just think there are some games here that they could lose. I think the end of the year for Georgia is a little bit trickier with Florida, Tennessee, at Mississippi State, and at Kentucky. And in just a second, I'm going to tell you who I actually do believe will win the SEC East. But Alabama will lose a game. Now, that's not the absolute boldest, boldest prediction because their over-under in Vegas is set at 10.5 right now. So, you know, even Vegas, in order to hit that under, they need to lose two. So losing one, I think most people actually view them losing one. But there are a lot of people out there that think they will run the table because – uh, they do return the Heisman Trophy winning quarterback and arguably Nick Saban's best pass rusher ever. And obviously they not only have uh, Bryce Young and Will Anderson, they have Dallas Turner on the other end right there. My issue is not necessarily the offensive line. I know that's been a popular pick as to why Alabama will lose a game, but more so the actual schedule for Bama. So for me, I do think... They catch a massive break getting Vanderbilt on this schedule. They get the absolute best draw. It's a 1-6 in six chance that Alabama plays Vanderbilt in the regular season, and it's a 1-12 in 12 chance that that game is played in Tuscaloosa. The game is in Tuscaloosa. It doesn't matter where that game was played, but still, you do get a favorable SEC East matchup. But outside of that, I do think Alabama's schedule is tougher than what meets the eye because you have to think about what Nick Saban has gone through over his career. One major thing that is not talked enough about the Saban regime is rarely does Alabama have to play two tough opponents in back-to-back -back weeks. Because Tennessee has been so mediocre for so long, um, Tennessee has just kind of become an automatic win for Alabama. And once you take that out, Really yearly, uh, Auburn, who they normally play in the final week of the year, after playing an FCS or non-Power 5 team the week before, LSU, since 2010, both teams have had a bye week before they played each other. So if you factor those two things in with LSU and Auburn, rarely does Alabama have to play two top 15-ish teams or two top 20 recruiters in back-to-back -back weeks. But there's two things that really interest me about their schedule. The first, obviously, isn't the fact that they play at Texas. I think they're going to beat down Texas. But it's what actually happens after week four versus Vanderbilt, where they have to play at Arkansas, then an emotional game versus Texas A&M based on all the offseason distractions. And then the next week, they play the high-powered Tennessee Volunteers in Knoxville. And keep in mind, last year, that game was competitive. I know the scoreline doesn't indicate that, but there was a pick six that wasn't the byproduct of good defense. It was a miscommunication between a quarterback and a receiver. So, in other words, it was a 
really lucky pick six, which helped seal that game. Now, Alabama still would have won that game, but Tennessee was able to move the football. So for me, I, I do see Alabama losing either that Texas A&M game or that Tennessee game. Now, for me, uh, we'll talk about Texas A&M in just a second, but um, I, I could see a loss there, and I also could see a loss after the bye week. Now, I know a lot of you are going to say, well, of course, you see Alabama losing to your LSU Tigers, right? Which, if this just happens to be the first time you've ever watched my channel, I am a full-time LSU content creator. I have Power Hour LSU. It is a passion project. I actually see Alabama potentially losing that next game versus Ole Miss. So one thing in the SEC that you see historically is rarely do teams have to play true back-to-back -back road games. And after that bye week at LSU, at Ole Miss, Ole Miss has some really interesting pieces on offense. I could see that being a difficult game for Nick right there. Now we get to prediction number three. Texas A&M finishes in the SEC West third or worse. Now, here's the thing. It may not sound that bold, but go look at most SEC predicted orders of finish. And because the SEC West is very deep this year, and because it is Alabama and everybody else, um, I have to say Texas A&M has been the most popular pick to finish second in the West. And a lot of that is because of this last recruiting class, arguably the best recruiting class in the history of college football. And look, I love Texas A&M's offensive line. Bryce Foster is a really talented player there. And Texas A&M did fix a big issue this year, getting some better talent at skill positions. They do, lo they do lose Isaiah Spiller. Um, and for me, this is a big thing, and it's the biggest secret kept in the SEC. Jimbo Fisher is a horrible play caller, and in particular, he is bad in road games. So Jimbo Fisher, really interesting guy. Obviously, his connections to LSU are very well known, and his national championship at Florida State was phenomenal, and his recruiting has been phenomenal at Texas A&M. And I think a lot of you have seen the comparison so far to Jimbo's tenure to Kevin Sumlin's tenure, and there's really not that much difference in terms of wins and losses, but I do think this Texas A&M schedule sets up poorly for them, okay? So they do play a talented Miami team in Week 3, and I do think that game could be a loss for them. And Tyler Van Dyke, for me, is a very underrated quarterback, and you move along in the schedule, Arkansas at a neutral site, then at Mississippi State, and at Alabama. And this is the big point I want to make about Jimbo Fisher. He is by far the worst play caller in the SEC when it comes to calling plays away from Kyle Field. If you go look at his home and road splits when it comes to yards per play, the difference is staggering if you look year to year with common opponents. And for me, that's tough. Now, I do see that they get a bye week before their road game at South Carolina, but that is four games away from Kyle Field in a row. And until Jimbo gets that fixed, I have a tough time seeing AM get over the hump. And there's no guarantee that they're going to win all of their home games this year. So now we get to the funnest one here. Tennessee wins the East. Now, I know that that's not going to be popular. That's perfectly fine. That's why we're here. That's why it's bold predictions. But let me say, uh, let me tell you a few things about Tennessee, right? Dave Bartu has him as his third best efficiency team behind Alabama and Georgia going into this next year. I do think they returned the second best quarterback in the SEC. And I don't think it is too far fetched to see him actually beating out Bryce Young for first team all SEC quarterback because I think Hendon Hooker is going to have a massive year. I do see Alabama running the football a little bit more, and I see Tennessee actually airing it out a little bit more this year than they already have. And Tennessee obviously returns some very interesting running backs led by Jabari Small, and they return the most underrated in the uh, player in the SEC for me, which is Cedric Tillman on the outside. Their offensive line is very experienced, and their defense is very experienced. Now, their DC, uh, his name flips my mind, uh, the, he's very talented from Penn State, 
But they did have some games where their yard per play numbers and explosive play rates weren't really good. And part of that is due to when you're a defensive-minded coach with an offense that goes as fast as Tennessee goes, it is harder to call defense. So I do give the volunteers um, a pass there. But for me, I I just think offensively they're going to be too tough to stop. And I do think defensively they'll be better. Now, I know they lost Taylor to the Saints and some other key draft picks, five draft picks overall, two in that secondary, but hopefully you could see them get better in that department. I just love what they have offensively. I think they're going to be, you know, with year two in Heupel's offense, really tough to beat. The issue, though, is the schedule, right? It's a brutal, brutal schedule, but... Before they go to Baton Rouge, they do get a bye week before that game. And yes, they play Alabama the very next week, but at least that game is in Knoxville. And ultimately, the SEC, they're going to have to win one of those games between LSU and Alabama, but ultimately, the SEC is going to be decided when they play Georgia. So, a little bonus for you uh, here at the end. I like Missouri over five and a half wins. And so Missouri brings in, to me, one of the best players in all of college football as a true freshman, Luther Burton. He's gotten some Jamar Chase comparisons, and I I think he is a year one guy. I think he's that special. And he'll get some Kayshawn comparisons as well once he starts going. Now, of course, the quarterback is the big question mark, but I don't think Eli Drinkowitz is going to have much of an issue getting that offense rolling. I know they lose Tyler Beatty, but the truth is Connor Bazelak uh, he, he reached a ceiling, right? Not really a vertical passer. And if they can start hitting some more explosive plays with Burden on the outside, watch out for Missouri. Now, defensively last year, they were awful, but they did make a Bo Pelini-esque kind of hire with Steve Wilkes, Todd Grantham hire for you Florida fans. Um, it, it was a bad hire, right? And, you know, outside of maybe Grantham, Wilkes was probably the worst D.C., in the SEC East last year. I think Blake Baker could turn this thing around for Missouri, at the very least, make them somewhat decent. And if they do, I like Missouri over five and a half. And this may not mean a lot, and I know I am not a betting sharp by any stretch of the imagination, but I like the fact that I get a number at five and a half because that last week, if you're at six, you are definitely, or if if you're at five wins, you're going to go as hard as you can to get that sixth win and if that final week they are playing Arkansas okay Arkansas I think most of you have them as like a seven and four uh eight and three kind of team who's going to need that game more Missouri or Arkansas the answer of course is Missouri at home so because of that I do like Missouri to get over the five and a half it might just be six but I could see seven I'm not in love with Kansas State this year I am not in love with Auburn this year. It is not far-fetched to think that they can win one of those two games early on in the year. As long as they stop the explosive plays, as long as they resemble a more explosive offense as well, I think they are going to get over five and a half. So, boom! Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. This is your first ever video. Let me know what you like. Let me know what you dislike. It is Power Hour. S-E-C. Bam! And tonight... Oh, we're doing tacos tonight. Let's go.